Hi Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel. I'm Megan. I'm Dwayne. And we are the Blended Family Marriage Coaches. That's who we are and what we do. If you're new here, we're so excited to have you guys. Today is going to be a little bit something different. <laughs> no way. <laughs> what? We're never different. <laughs> we're going a little off the cuff today. We're going to talk about the importance of marriage. Mm, great topic. Marriage is so important, and I think sometimes it's underrated. So we're going to talk about that topic and the importance of it to different people and different individuals within your family. So stay tuned. So for the very best advice in your blended family marriage, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. It's right underneath Dwayne, right over there. Right. <laughs> so hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to ring the bell. Ding dong. So that way you don't miss a single message that we have for you guys regarding your blended family marriage. We love our subscribers and we talk about everything from intimacy to finances to parenting issues to boundaries. Make sure that you ring that bell because then you won't miss a single episode as we continue these topics on your blended family marriage. So marriage. Oh my goodness. Marriage is hard, but blended, blended family, family marriages marriage are harder. harder. And That's so sure. many times all over social media, every time we do it, ask us a, a question. One of the questions that we get asked is, is it worth it? Truly, is it worth it? And I always say yes. Right. <laughs> I know that there are circumstances when staying is not an option, when things have happened and really working toward reconciliation maybe isn't in the best interest of people in the family. But I, those are very extreme and I very rarely will even work with people in those circumstances. And I will refer them to more professional counselors and even psychiatrists to help them manage those kind of emotions, feelings, and destruction really right and so there are very rare cases when no it's time to get out that i would ever ever say that i hate to <laughs> say never because you know then i'm gonna somebody's right. gonna say well what about domestic violence or what about this and what about that okay there are some circumstances <laughs> when i think yes please get out so i'm really talking about general hard seasons of marriage and whether or not it's worth it right. i'm here to tell you it is always worth it it is always worth it there were times in Dwayne and I's marriage when I was wondering <laughs> myself if this is worth it I have felt all of those feelings that I think blended family moms and dads feel all the time I wrote about them in my book I wrote about feeling like I was the other person because Dwayne and his ex-wife the co-parent of our children I kept thinking, would they be together if it weren't for me? Am I the one that's keeping this family separate? And that was something really hard that I had to deal with. There were times when I thought, honestly, Dwayne, you can do this by yourself. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> and he would have gladly packed my bags for me because he was ready to do it by himself. And he was done. We have been through those seasons. But it was knowing that at the end of the day, so many people count on our marriage right. that kept us together. It was knowing and understanding that we were in a covenanted relationship to each other. Mm -hmm. And there is no other covenanted relationship in your life except for that with Jesus Christ, which is far and above more important. Right. But second to that only is your marriage. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that you have sworn before God to say until death do us part. Right. And the nature of a blended family is that probably one or the other or both have already been through a divorce. Mm -hmm. They've already experienced that devastation. They've already seen how many people are affected by their decision to terminate their marriage. Right. And it is, the ripples are right. huge. Do mm -hmm. you want to explain what I meant by ripples? So I remember... At one time when I was I was looking for a book to read, and I remember um, I was on, I don't know, one of the Christian book sites or something. I was looking for a book, and there was a book out there. It's called something like Ripples or something. I was never able to find the book again um, because I didn't write it down or anything. But the whole premise of the book when I read like the little synopsis is when you throw a rock into a pond or into a body of water, you always have the proclunk. That's your marriage. And then you just from, said per clunk. Per, <laughs> I did. <laughs> and then once once the rock goes in, there's always ripples. And the those ripples go on. You know, if it was a nice calm, you know, day and there is no waves or anything, like it would be, you know, the ripples could go out for, you know, 20, 30 feet or whatever. And that's really how your the effects that your marriage can have. 
or um, the ending of your marriage can yes. have. You have that initial marriage and then the ripple effects can go on. You know, it could honestly go on for generations. Yes. We, you know, we don't know what um, what that is. And interestingly enough, I was listening to a podcast today and he talked about that, you know, just the, the ripple effects um, of, um, of money mm. and... Um, and stuff. So a little bit off topic there because the you know the, the podcast that I was talking about was about money, but it was just about the ripple effect that you can have on future generations. Yes. And definitely um, for us, that's the one one thing that we really have um, held tight to is because, um, as some of you know, we actually, we have a granddaughter coming. Yay! We found out it's a granddaughter. It's a granddaughter. Yay! And and so you know we want our marriage to have positive ripple effects on our granddaughter and even on, you know, and our great grandchildren and and the generation that that, follows. Divorce has really become a generational curse. It's become something Mm -hmm. that, you know, statistically our kids are more likely to get divorces themselves because they experience divorce through us. Mm -hmm. And whether or not you believe in curses or the spiritual realm there, the the ramifications and the evidence there is there that your children watched you give up on a marriage. I hate to say that because that sounds so harsh, but that's really what you did. What, whatever the circumstances were, I'm sure that you were totally justified in what you did. I'm not trying to call you out on that, but your kids did watch that. Right. And they can think in their head, well, mom and dad did it and they were okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll do it too. And then the next generation says the same thing. And then you can see how generationally really the, what you're setting up is divorce and devastation because divorce is devastating. Right. Again, I want to clarify, there are times when it's justified. There are times when it's not Mm -hmm. devastating. It's freedom to a lot of people. But I'm talking about, in general, divorce is hard. It is so hard. And what's so important in society is the bedrock of family. Right. It is so important in society. Mm -hmm. We see it. And I don't know if you have a good family. I don't know if you have amazing parents that are a great example and have been married for 50 years. I don't know if you have parents that are a mess and you had to worry about which side of the family was going to be at what event so that way mom and dad didn't end up in the same room together fighting. I don't know what kind of family you came from, but Mm -hmm. what I do know is that you can determine what kind of family your kids come from. Right. And that's such a blessing to be able to do. And I believe strongly that is the bedrock of society. And we have the chance to decide if I didn't come from a big, from a good family, I can decide right here and right right now Mm -hmm. that a good family is going to come from me. That is so important. Um, families are the ones that become kingdom builders. Families are the ones mm-hmm. that surround each other when when you need support. Families are the ones that really help keep this society running. I heard a quote one time, and I, I stick to it. It's become my, my, my mantra that, hold on, I always say it wrong. The way of the nation is the way of the church. The way of the church is the way of the family. And the way of the family is the way of the marriage. Your marriage determines how your family is going to turn out. Your marriage determines that a good family is going to come from me. My kids are going to see healthy conflict. Please don't hide when you have conflict. Please don't take that into the other room. Obviously, if you're fighting about the kids or about punishment <laughs> or about, you know, different parenting styles, right. yes, don't have that those kind of con- conversations in front of them. But if you are talking and arguing and having a little bit of a heated fellowship right. <laughs> over something that just is life, please have those conversations in front of your kids. Let them see what a healthy marriage is. Conflict is healthy. Right. That is something that is healthy. If two people live together and they never fight, honestly, there's issues. There's problems. They're probably not interacting with each other. (laughs) They're probably avoiding that conflict. And then it's like a pressure cooker and the the lid's going to fly off and everything's going to fall apart. And I think that in in our society that we've really seen that now, you know, especially on social media, you like when you disagree or someone disagrees with your statement, there's not a healthy conversation about yes. it and tends into a name calling and, and, and everything the like that. Or that the cancel culture Yeah, yes. and all that type of stuff. And, and just people have forgotten what it's like to, 
you know, have conflict have and, a good debate. and have a good debate. I don't even know if they have debate in schools anymore. I when I went to high school, that was something they had was, and it's was date, uh, debate team. So and, important. Yeah. And your kids need to see that. Your kids need to see that. Don't avoid talking about politics and religion in front of your kids. Absolutely talk about those things in front of your kids. Mm -hmm. And especially if you disagree right. <laughs> with each other or with anybody else, let them see it's okay to disagree. That is okay, and we still love. That is who we are. Right. And I think that we try so hard to shelter our kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm gonna get on my soapbox right now about the importance of marriage. Our marriage, our relationship is to be modeled so that way our kids know what a marriage and a relationship is supposed right. to look like. That's what our goal is. Dwayne and I has, have made that our marriage mm -hmm. mission statement. If you guys haven't heard of that before, we did a whole video on marriage mission statements, and I will link it above there right now <laughs> so check that out after you're done watching this one but that is Dwayne and I's marriage mission statement is to be the marriage that we want our kids to have right how else are they going to know how to do it certainly not from my first marriage not that's mine. not the kind of marriage that I want my kids to have not right. from Dwayne's first marriage they're going to learn that from us and mm -hmm. we are determined to make that so our goal in life and my favorite favorite person in the world says this all the time. Andy Andrews says, our goal in life is not to raise good children. Mm -hmm. Our goal in life is to raise good adults. adults right. You can have good children. You can have good children that answers all the questions and yes ma'ams and yes sirs and knows their manners. But really, how are they going to behave when they're outside of your home? Right. Do they understand healthy conflict? Do they understand that marriage is hard but worth it? Do they understand all of those things that make a good adult? Mm, right. Do they understand the value of work? That work ethic is important. Money is important. Do they understand those kind of things? Work ethic is important. Money management is important. Do they understand those kind of things? Or are these those being hidden and those conversations happening behind closed doors right. so you're not able to model your behavior? Mm -hmm. And those are all things that I want to you guys to really think about with your marriage. When you ask if it's worth it, yes. Yes, it is. But it's going to take work. Right. Anything that's worth it is not easy. Anything that's worth it is worth working for. Mm -hmm. So it's it's worth it, but it's not going to happen just naturally. Right. If you guys have questions or if you want some tools in your toolbox on how to make your marriage worth it, please reach out to us. We have an amazing program that we would love for you guys to be a part of. It is something that you and your spouse can do on your own time and you guys can use us as the blended family marriage coaches to help you determine what work you have to do right. in order to get your marriage to the point that it is worth it. We would love to talk to you guys about that. I think that's all we have to say today. Yeah, it's I think so. It's pretty off the cuff. We really it wanted to talk to you guys about the importance of marriage. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. We sure love you guys. Don't forget to subscribe, and we will see you next week. See ya. Bye. Bye.